I've always been fascinated by how weather gets right inside our lives, shaping what we do and feel, who we see, what we wear, what we eat and just about everything. I've come to think of weather as part of the weave of life and to think of the way we experience weather and seasons with all our senses, our emotions and our imaginations as living the weather. So, early in 2015, I began a study to discover how people in the Calder Valley actually go about living the weather. Local participants helped me by sending regular reports and stories and pictures about how weather was influencing their lives. It was an eventful year for them to document, with some tropical-style early summer storms, then a summer of cool and wet weather, a spectacular autumn, and a wet and stormy winter culminating in the devastating Boxing Day floods. At the end of the summer, we embarked on making a documentary film with some of my participants to get to know their experiences of living the weather. For me, walking has always been an essential part of the writing process. It's partly to do with the blood moving around the body, sending fresh oxygen to the brain. It helps to induce a certain state, meditative perhaps, receptive to creativity. And it's best if the surroundings are unobtrusive, not too eye-catching, not worrying or disturbing in any way. And it's best if the weather is unobtrusive too. No storms, no blizzards, no heat waves. There's another way of walking, when I go out with all my senses alert, absorbing everything around me and letting it become part of the creation. When I want to notice every detail, as the details will become part of what I write. The rain in this valley can be so relentless, it wears you down. Because there's no way you can be outside and stay dry in that sort of persistent rain. So you end up not going out unless you absolutely have to. So that's why running is so important to me. It's a way of still being outside despite the rain. You don't have to try and protect yourself. You know you're going to get soaked through straight away. It can be hard to make yourself go out though, even though you know that once you're outside it'll be fine. It's leaving that's the problem. Looking out at the rain and wondering if it'll brighten up later. That's why running together is good, because one of us can always talk the other one into going out.
And then sometimes it can be really quite exciting when it's lashing it down and everybody would think you were totally mad for going outside. And there you are, sliding around through the mud and over the rocks and the paths have all become mini streams and you can't see a thing because of the rain on your glasses. And there's just something about running that's really freeing. It's escaping everything, work, the house, organising, planning, sorting, and just being a creature running through a wood. And if it's raining, it's raining. When we first visited the house, it was the first weekend in January, and as we drove up, sleet fell and wind blew around us. We left immediately after that first and only viewing and decided it was the house for us. We wonder to this day what it was on that horrible winter's day that sold us on living up here. We'd worried about what the weather in winter might bring and the effect this would have on our lives and our mood. Would it be a constant storm, cold, wet, windy and dark? When you have two energetic dogs who need long daily walks, you have no choice but to face the weather, whatever it is doing that day. You learn pretty quickly that it's easier just to try and ignore the bad weather and get on with it. And for doing so, you often experience days and times outdoors that you never would do otherwise. Getting up at 6am on a winter morning, I've often seen the most special, secret, beautiful parts of a day and I have memories of a fresh frost, a giant orange setting moon, technicolour skies as the sun rises, just me and the dogs. Going outside and getting some fresh air seems to have a medicinal effect that I can't get elsewhere. And I can't imagine ever wanting to live in the city again. When I'm driving, uh, I'm thinking about what I've got on during the day, uh, what the weather conditions are going to be like, what the M62 is going to be like, whether I'll be in a traffic jam, and I'm planning what route I should take, depending on what the weather's like. If, it, if it's raining, then I'll, I'll be listening to the radio and hear also the traffic news, and if they say there's delays, then I'll, I'll, I'll be thinking about doing an alternative route. On the way home from work, especially when it's night and the fog is quite bad, when you come off the M62, on a few occasions it's been quite um, dense, thick fog. 
that scares me, the fog. But okay. if I do drive in the sunshine, which is very rare these days, I um, have the music on quite loud and sing louder than I probably do normally. <laughs> I'm a freelance woodland manager and forester. I love my job and there's a few different things that I like about it. One of them is the freedom that it gives me. Nobody expects me to be anywhere at a specific time. The other thing that I like about my job is I feel like I'm doing something meaningful that I believe in. Lots of our woodlands in the UK are undermanaged, so it's nice to be part of the process of, of sorting out biodiversity. When I'm working in a woodland, I'm looking at it as an ecosystem as a whole. And when I'm working, doing thinning in the woodland, that's why I'm there. I'm there to have an impact on the ecosystem. So I feel like just another animal going about its business within that ecosystem. I don't mind feeling the elements. I actually, I love working outside. I love getting filthy, getting cold. It makes me feel like I've done a day's work. The weather year of my study has been an eventful one, which at times seemed to defy the seasons. Some of my participants have described a growing unease about the wrongness of the seasons, and the sheer scale of the floods plays into an underlying anxiety about climate change and global warming. No one doubts that the floods change the atmospherics of the place, and of people's relationships with the weather, possibly for good. People have felt wounded by the weather, but with the hope and promise of spring, they have started to dare to notice and describe magical and redemptive weather moments once again. Calder Valley weather can be challenging, but it can also create the purest and most brilliant moments of rejoicing. <laughs> 